Hello, everyone. Welcome to another session of Builders and Bricksters here at Databricks. Today, we are excited to have Jordan from Stuzo. Jordan, it's great to see you again. Thanks for having me, Nina. Good to be awesome. here. Awesome. Um, so just to start, can you tell me a little bit about yourself and your, the role that you play with data um, here at Stuzo? Sure. So I'm a principal engineer here at Stuzo. So I'm in charge of the creation and implementation of our next generation data platform. Uh, speaking a bit more technically, that means that I've been responsible for the product selection, architecture, oversight of the actual coding, and the coordination with our product managers to make sure the data pipeline is meeting the needs of our product roadmap. It's a bit of a full plate. I understand that Stuzo is a high growth company built on the cloud and you are growing rapidly. Uh, I also understand that you provide a ton of data for your customers. Could you tell me more about your business and the role that data plays in your everyday solutions? Sure. So Stuzo is what's referred to as an activation and commerce technology company. What that means is that we help retailers profitably steer a greater share of their customers' wallets to their brand by getting to know and activate more customers using data than compared with any other solution provider out there, which Based on that language, I'm sure you can guess that means that data is really important to us. Specifically, yeah. our goal is to always use the data that we have to help our customers continually and reliably optimize their outcomes that they see from our system. That sounds awesome. So Jordan, how has Databricks contributed uh, to evolving your data approach? Can you tell me more about your journey using Databricks? Sure. So Databricks has pretty much formed the foundation for our next generation approach that we're deploying right now. Uh, having a platform that manages orchestration of our data streams while also providing data ops functionality and tooling like Delta Lake, it's really allowed us to focus less on the infrastructure and overhead distractions. And as a result, we've been able to focus more on important stuff like the cleansing and standardization of our data or the actual extraction of insights that benefit our customers. It's really made it so that we can focus on the problems at hand and not on the chaotic noise of the background. Okay. And then I also understand that you have evolved your data in a very, very short amount of time um, and you have laid the next stage of innovation. Can you tell me a little bit about how your relationship with Databricks and using our products has helped you with that? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, one of the most important things that I had in my mind when we were at the starting line of this is that I wanted to move fast and I wanted to move without breaking things. Because when you're in the realm of data, you've got to make sure that you're guaranteeing the fidelity and the quality and consistency of what you're providing to people. And I've always taken that as something that is just really important when working with this stuff. And that means that I started with just utilizing the components that Databricks had available. Terraform was important from jump to get us so that we could have the components available in the cloud when we needed them without a whole lot of work. From there, I utilized the Delta IO library to experiment, iterate, and test our pipeline code locally. And I say that with emphasis because it was really important to test while we were iterating so that we didn't even have to just launch a cluster to find out if things could work. We mm -hmm. utilize the tools that Databricks has available so that we could do that close by and quickly. And then from there, we relied on the repos API to make it so that we could easily integrate our entire CI CD pipeline with the auto deployment of this stuff so that we didn't have to worry about that. And we still don't have to worry about that. Yeah. A regular day for me or the rest of the team is cutting code, testing it, reviewing it, shipping it, and then this stuff just works and it's merged right into the pipeline as part of the next run. That's really great to hear. We are always excited to hear about successful use cases and that was well explained and thank you for that. So Jordan, tell me a little bit about how Databricks fits into your architecture at Stuzo. So we utilize Databricks to capture changes in our application data without putting additional load on our platform. From there, we rely on Spark Streaming to stitch together the stages of data as they move through the medallion process. Once we have all of this 
enriched and refined data stored in our Delta table driven lake house, it's finally ready for consumption by our users. I'm also curious. So, you know, where is Stuzo focused uh, next around innovation? Like, what do you guys think and where are you going? Will Databricks impact those challenges? Oh, absolutely. Um, as I said, our big thing is about optimizing the experience that our customers have. And when we talk about the future, we're always focused on making it possible for people to retain the high value that they get from the software. But we're also looking at making it so that they can do it in less time with less steps and less work. Um, you know, Arthur C. Clarke's law around magic, the idea that anything done with sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic is something that's close to our hearts. And that means that we're going to be squeezing the most juice out of tools like DLT, tools like MLflow to create these features and functionality that are that magic. That was really great. I really liked hearing that. Um, well, okay. So if you were to give advice on best practices to someone maybe just starting in data or starting with Databricks, you know, what, what advice would that be? What, what route would you suggest that they go facing similar data challenges that you have faced um, in your experience? I think first and foremost, you've got to start with knowing your requirements. Nobody's going to ask an engineer to build an application without helping them understand the requirements for that app. And data pipelines and data platforms should work the same way. Oftentimes they don't. Oftentimes people say, hey, we just want an extract of this model or we want to see this. But the reality is it's important to know why. Why do you want to see that data? What is it contributing to the business? You've got to have your understanding requirements first and foremost, ready to go and well documented. If you ever have a misstep, it's almost always because the understanding requirements weren't clear. From there, test, test, test. Test-driven development is something that is so common in the rest of the engineering industry, but it's not super common with data pipelines. And you got to test before you ever launch your first cluster. And then finally, once you get this stuff out there and running, monitor your platform. Data ops is still really early on, but that doesn't make it any less important. The last thing that you need as somebody that's writing data platform code, running or managing a data platform, is to have your users or customers telling you when something is wrong. You need to be the one that knows when there's something going wrong and you need to get ahead of it because that's how you maintain and keep trust. Awesome. That was a great answer. I love the uh, mentioning, you know, being more proactive instead of reactive. I think that's excellent. Um, well, Jordan, I want to thank you so much for your time today and participating in our Builders and Bricksters series. It was great getting to know you and getting to learn more about Stuzo and your relationship with Databricks. And we look forward to working with you further in the future. Thanks, Nina. It's been a pleasure. Awesome. Take care.